Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So an interesting study out of the University of Southern California looks at factors that may affect our longevity that aren't necessarily genetic or epigenetic based. Indeed, factors that could have been put in place decades before we were even born by our grandmothers. So enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study out of the University of Southern California has got to offer. This is the review of a piece I read that was penned by Beth Newcomb of the University of Southern California. It investigates a new model of aging that takes into account not only genetics and environmental exposures, but also the tiny changes that randomly arise at the cellular level and there are links in the description below to the articles I used to put this presentation together. University professor Caleb Finch introduced the tripartite phenotype of aging as a new conceptual model that addresses why lifespan varies so much even among human identical twins who share the exact same genes. According to Finch only about 10 the 35% of longevity can be traced to genes inherited from our parents. Caleb Finch authored the paper with a former graduate student, Amin Hagani, who received his PhD in the biology of aging in 2020 and is now a postdoctoral researcher at UCLA. In the article, they propose that the limited heritability of aging patterns and longevity in humans is an outcome of gene environment interactions, as well as random variations in the body cells. The random changes can include cellular changes that happen during development and molecular damage that occurs later in life. Caleb Finch, a professor at the USC Leonard Davis School said, we wanted to introduce a conceptual map and some new technology that will motivate a more comprehensive understanding of what the limitations of genetic determinants in aging are, how important it is to consider the genetic variance in relationship to the environment and include the new domain of scholastic variations, which is very well recognized by different fields. It hasn't really been put in a formal context in which the complete package can be discussed. And that's what I hope our article achieves. The new model is a natural extension of the idea of the exposome, which was first proposed by cancer epidemiologist Christopher Paul Wilde in 2005 to draw attention to the need for more data on lifetime exposure to environmental carcinogens. The exposome concept illustrates how external factors ranging from air pollution and socioeconomic status to individual diet and exercise patterns interact with endogenous or internal factors such as the body's microbiome and fat deposits. Professor Finch went on to say that the new model illustrates that cell by cell variations in gene expression variations arising during development, random mutations and genetic changes, turning genes off or on, should be explicitly considered apart from traditional genetic or environmental research regarding aging. More detailed study into these chance processes has been enabled by cutting edge research techniques, including the study of gene transcription within single cells, as well as chip sequencing which can illustrate how individual proteins interact with DNA. In the paper, Finch and Hagani discussed several examples of how risks of age-related disease are poorly predicted by DNA alone, but are heavily influenced by environmental exposures, as well as the time and duration of that exposure. One well-known example of a gene that is associated with increased Alzheimer's risk is ApoE4. However, having the ApoE4 gene doesn't definitively mean that someone will develop Alzheimer's. Indeed, studies in both mice and humans reveal that ApoE4 and clusters of related genes interact with exposure to things such as air pollution and cigarette smoke 
to influence the risk. Alzheimer's patients also show differences in their epigenetics when compared to individuals without the disease. Finch added that the idea of environmental exposure can stretch farther back than many people expect. The environment that we're exposed to goes back to our grandmothers because the egg we came from was in our mother's ovaries at the time of her birth. So that means in my case, because my grandmother was born in 1878, I might very well carry some traces of the 19th century environment, which included much greater exposure to infectious diseases because there were no antibiotics. Professor Finch said he hopes the more comprehensive model on how genes, the environment and random variations over time interact to influence aging. I think that there will be a much greater recognition in understanding individual patterns of aging. We can only define it up to a certain point by knowing the genetic risks. We must have a more comprehensive understanding of the lifetime exposures, environments and lifestyles of an individual to have a better understanding of genetic risk for particular diseases. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. You'll know if you watch my interview with Dr. Tom Stubbs, the CEO of Chronomics, a DNA testing company, you're five times more likely to develop a life altering disease from an epigenetic source rather than a genetic trait. For example, if unfortunately you have a family history of say cancer or Alzheimer's, you're five times more likely to actually develop that disease if you make poor choices with regard to lifestyle. So a good reason to reduce processed foods, and when we talk about processed foods, we mean vegan burgers as well. Don't overindulge on alcohol and do not smoke tobacco. A good reason as well to adopt a healthy lifestyle that includes good nutrition, good sleep, exercise that makes you breathless at least once a day, and also targeted supplementation. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.